welcome, welcome to vlog number 96. Um, second week of January, mm -hmm. and it's great to have you with us. So good. Yep. Yep. Should we introduce ourselves, Carly? I think we should. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Carly. And I'm Jacob. And, and this, this is... is Meek. Or Dino, Dino Kitty. Or Dino Kitty. From the start. From the start. Yep. This is our kitten. We are filming from home today, just for a change of scenery. Change it up, yeah. And um, we're so glad you're joining us. Can you believe we're on vlog, vlog number 96? That's wild. So crazy. Wild. Um, all month, well, if, if you've just recently started watching with these, we do something cool each month, well, each week, these vlogs come out. And you can come watch them in person with us at Horizon Church. We'd love to see mm -hmm. there, but they're in on Surrey? YouTube. Oh yeah, or in Princeton. Or in Princeton, yeah. Um, and each week we post these on YouTube as well. We have lots of fun with them, so we'd love to see you join us. Yeah. And so this month's theme, Carly, is remote control. The choice is yours. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you like that? Should we all do it? Remote yep. control. That, that choice, choice is, is yours. yours. I guess it's like backwards because like a robot like doesn't really have a choice. That's Never true. mind. We'll do it, but we'll know it's like broken. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're talking about this because um, our life app for the month of January is self control, <laughs> which Meek has yep. little of. <laughs> little of. What is self control, Kelly? Self control is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. Awesome. And we have a Bible verse this month, um, which we're talking about. And every week uh, we talk about the Bible. We love the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's such a key part to being a Christian and following Jesus. It so much. It does. And so this Bible verse is from 2 Peter 1 verse 3. And it says, God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. Yeah. Such a good verse. And today, <laughs> She wanted to say in between us. Oh. <laughs> Hello. She's very cute. <laughs> and distracting, as you can see. Mm. Today's bottom line is when you lose control, it can cause trouble. Uh oh. And that's why we're talking about self control because we want to avoid that kind of trouble. And we're going to look at the Bible. It's going to show us some examples and give us some really good advice on what it looks like to lose control and how not to do that. So good. Well, let's check out our Bible story and we'll see you in a bit. And we're on. Hey everybody, I'm Jacob. You ever think about what life was like? before the remote control was invented? Just imagine, every time you wanted to change the channel, you had to actually get up, walk over to the TV, and change the channel dial. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't touch that dial. <sighs> I should appreciate you more. But we're not here to talk about remote controls. We're here to talk about self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had a remote control for ourselves? An actual self-control? <laughs> that way, if I was ever feeling bored or something, I could just, you know, change the channel. Like, all right, you varmint. You've met your match. I'm the fastest channel switcher on this side of the Colorado. Sure is lonely out in space. Oh, fall back. Picks his target. Pass! Sorry, Miss Ackerman. Dance party! I'm the turquoise avenger. I knight thee. <laughs> Can't stop dancing. Can't stop dancing. Things are getting out of hand. Scalpel. Whoa. Finally, I had to take the batteries out. <laughs> that was, that was trouble. 
In today's story, we'll find out that when you lose control, trouble is exactly what you'll get. We'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 28. Theo Brickman knew he had the perfect name. He had been building brick creations ever since he could wrap his chubby baby hand around a mega brick. Brick! As Theo grew older, he moved on to brick building kits, but soon his imagination raced ahead of any building kit or building instruction set you could ever buy. I want to build Jupiter, all of Narnia, a ginormous flying pizza. Theo even got a job at a brick building store so he could spend his days surrounded by bricks. So he was overjoyed when he found out that a brick building TV show called Brick Bosses was going to be holding auditions in his town. I'll get on the show for sure. On the day of auditions, several dozen other people showed up along with Theo. He jostled up to the front for a good spot. <laughs> I bet not one of them can beat me. A tiny lady with iron gray hair eyed him sharply as she addressed the competitors. I am Althea Legoemi, and I shall be judging you on originality, technical skills, and overall conduct. There is a break room if you need a snack or rest, but no food may be eaten here in the brick room. You have four hours to build anything you can imagine. Begin! Theo raced to the side of the room where racks and bins holding every kind of brick stood. Hey, you stepped on my foot. <laughs> you snooze, you lose. Theo shoveled bricks into his bin. I'll build a castle, one with turrets and towers and a wonderful moat filled with shiny brick water. Theo got right to work. Soon, the walls of his fortress began to rise. He designed decorative windows and lofty balconies. Ooh, I should build a dragon to attack my castle. As Theo snapped red and gold bricks together to form his dragon, another competitor looked over. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a horse? Can't you see I'm not done with it yet, you, you, you blockhead? As time ticked on, Theo realized he was hungry, so he decided to take a quick snack break. Mm, just one minute. But in the break room, he discovered his favorite treat of all time. <gasps> Dill pickle and pizza potato chips. Theo downed one whole bag. <laughs> he desperately wanted another, but the clock was running down. I'll just sneak this back into the brick room with me. Theo finished his dragon between stuffing pizza chips in his mouth. He tried to hide the bag, but when he looked up, he noticed Althea spotting a trail of chip crumbs that he left behind. <laughs> she probably doesn't know that was me. With just a half hour to go, Theo's castle and dragon were nearly complete. I need a wall around the moat. Yeah, with a really cool pattern. So, Theo began snapping together an elaborate wall. But the wall simply would not behave. Gotta treat this piece apart. Pry as he might, Theo could not separate two small plates. Frustrated, Theo hurled the locked pieces across the room. They narrowly missed the head of Althea Lagoame, who was examining another competitor's project. She turned her head sharply to look in his direction. I don't think she saw it was me. As the final minutes ticked away, Theo fumbled to finish his wall. Time is up. Wheel your creations up to the judging stand. Theo glanced around as he wheeled his work table up to the front. <laughs> Mine's the best! But as Theo slid his table into position, 
It bumped over a crack in the floor. A big section of his perfect wall tilted and then crashed down. No! It was too late. Time was up. So Theo was not allowed to repair the wall. No fair. Theo sulked all the way through judging. When the names of the winners were announced, Theo's was not among them. What a waste of time. Theo stormed up to Althea. So, it was my castle wall, right? If that hadn't fallen, I would have won? It wasn't the castle wall, actually. It was your wall. What? Part of your score was conduct. How you acted and followed the guidelines and treated others throughout the audition. But I built the best creation. You do an excellent job of building without instructions, but it's pretty hard to go through life without instructions. My favorite guide for life is the book of Proverbs. You mean in the Bible? Exactly. Proverbs 25, 28 says, a person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. Oh. If your own wall was in good shape, I think you would have won today and caused a lot less trouble for yourself and the people around you. But that's not... <sighs> what if I do? Work on my self-control wall, I mean. Then you should definitely audition again next season. I think you'll have an excellent chance. Um, thank you. I think. Theo was deeply disappointed not to be chosen for this show, but as he was waiting for the bus to take him home, he downloaded a Bible app and tapped his way to Proverbs. Yep, maybe it was time for some life-building instructions. One of the wisest people ever, King Solomon, wrote this. A person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. People used to live in cities with walls around them to protect themselves from their enemies. So, if there was ever a hole in the wall, it meant trouble. You may not have ever lived in a city with a wall, but you can imagine what it would be like if there was a hole in the wall of your home. Ma, there's rain coming through the hole again. And there's a tiger. Huh. Oh. oh, tiger, Ma! Oh. Walls are there to protect us from harm. When we lose control, it's like those walls are broken through. And that can mean trouble. When you're not controlling yourself. Can't stop dancing! You're not paying attention to the things or people around you. And that's when things get broken. And when you or other people get hurt. Oh, fall back. Fix his target. Pass! Sorry, Miss Ackerman. Oops. So, here's the one thing to remember today. When you lose control, it can cause trouble. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If you really wanna control yourself, you're gonna need some help. Here's the good news. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. That means when you put your trust in Jesus and follow Him, the Holy Spirit will be there to help you keep control. Because control is something everyone needs. It's okay. It's fixed now. Oops. Well, I reckon it ain't then. Time to ride off into the sunset. Partner. Come on, Bessie, let's go! Yeah! Let's take another look at Solomon's words that are recorded in Proverbs 25, 28. It says, a person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. In biblical times, if a city didn't have a wall, the enemy could waltz right in, take over. There was literally no defense. Even the smallest hole could be big trouble. Mm -hmm. In the same way, a person who doesn't show any kind of restraint, someone who doesn't have any self-control or willpower, can't defend him or herself against overwhelming emotions. Getting mad turns into rage, and waiting your turn... I'm gonna turn that over. It's 
sorry, Bailey. <laughs> Getting mad turns into rage. Waiting turns into impatience. Without self-control, without the protections that are built up through respect, integrity, and love, you're totally wide open to making some poor choices. So what will help you avoid that? Prayer. Prayer connects you to God and God to you. When you pray, you get a direct line to God and God promises to help you. God will help you build and keep strong walls of self-control around your life if you ask him. God gives you the Holy Spirit to help you. Self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit that God will grow in us as we follow Jesus. So when you need help, ask God for it. God can help you say kind words when you don't feel like kind of saying kind words. God can help you find peace when all you feel is upset and frustrated. And when we ask, God can change your feelings towards others to help us show self-control in how we respond to them. Ask God to help you when it's difficult for you to show self-control. God can give you the wisdom that you need to make a choice that's actually good for you. God wants to help you, and he will. You can trust God no matter what. Absolutely. So our first question today is, why is self-control so important? Why can't we just do what we feel like doing? Mm -hmm. Discuss that. What's so important about self-control? Obviously, the Bible thinks that it is because it's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. So this isn't just us telling you to behave and, you know, do the right thing. But it's actually God in the Bible saying, this is going to help you have a great life. Absolutely. And our second question if, is, if parents and other adults have placed more walls, boundaries or rules in your life than you'd like, how could growing in self-control demonstrate that you might be ready for some of those walls to open up? Hmm. It's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, because sometimes there are rules put in place, maybe by a teacher, parent, whoever that is, that we don't really like, or maybe we don't even agree with. But self-control can help us. So discuss how that could happen. And finally, where do you need to most grow in self-control? I think this is a great kind of eye-opening yeah. question for all of us. Where do you, where do, where do I need to grow in self-control? Mm. Where do you need to grow in self-control? Yeah, maybe there's something that you know about yourself that you just don't have great self-control in. Maybe it's, yeah, you know, um, doing what your parents asked you to do. Maybe it's finishing your homework. And if you're not sure, maybe what would be great to do is to just maybe go up to your bedroom for a couple minutes and just pray. Mm -hmm. Ask God to show you where you need to grow in self-control control because he will give you a great answer to that. He'll reveal that to you and not because he's angry with you but because he loves you so much and he just wants the best for you. Absolutely. So good. Well do you want to pray for us today Carly? Yep. Jesus we thank you so much for the word of God that we can look to it to help us in every single area of our lives even with self-control. Um, God help us throughout this month to learn more about what self-control is and how we can have it and maybe where we need to grow in it um, so that we can have that more as a fruit of the Spirit in our lives and we can reflect who you are and who you want us to be. And we thank you, Jesus, for all the things you're teaching us, not because you're mean or angry or you just want us to fall in line, but because you love us so much, you want us to have the best possible life. Um, so help us to do that, help us to learn and grow and and have more self-control and we love you jesus it's in your name everybody said together amen, amen. awesome we'll see you guys next week bye, bye.